Greetings to all. I am Manisha Ward, Group Director Operation, representing Venkateshwara Group of Institutions from India. It gives me immense pleasure that IAO has given me an opportunity to deliver on the topic need for international accreditation. Mine would be a persuasive delivery wherein I would focus on the topic using the methods of exposition, cause and effect, etc. Speaking exclusively from an Indian point of view, I would justify the need for international accreditation for technical institutions. What is accreditation, ladies and gentlemen? The dictionary meaning of accreditation are official recognition, guarantor of quality, general acceptance. The primary purpose of accreditation is to ensure quality control and quality assurance commonly with reference to a certification system in the areas of education, training, testing, etc. In some countries, this function is performed by an agency of the Ministry of Education, while in several industrialized countries, it is undertaken by a confederation of voluntary agencies or professional societies. In our country, we do not yet have an umbrella organization confederating a majority of professional societies. Hence, sometimes there is a lot of confusion. There are, however, several quality control mechanisms in place, such as university affiliation, recognition by professional societies, such as Institution of Engineers, AICT approval for starting and continuing programs, etc. Commonly employed criteria are academic reputation, student selectivity, faculty resources, research output, and of course, financial resources. Present standard of accreditation in India. The Indian National Board of Accreditation, that is NBA, was established on the lines of the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology US in the year 1994. NBA made several changes to take local conditions into account. It has managed to accomplish a number of things such as the definition of criteria and weighing, the preparation of a set of four documents including manuals and questionnaires, organization of training programs for accreditors and accreditation of over 400 programs covering both UG and PG levels. However, certain challenges have surfaced since then which definitely need to be resolved. They are 1. There are a large number of programs of engineering colleges and polytechnics which are waiting to be accredited. There is an acute shortage of competent assessors, particularly from industry. There are multiple inspection agencies such as University Grants Commission as in UGC, the All India Council for Technical Education, universities, often with overlapping jurisdiction. The visiting teams are handicapped by lack of secretarial support, particularly if the chairman and assessors are retired professors. In the affiliating system prevailing in India, the individual institutions are not in control of the curricula, as would be the case for autonomous institutions. It is not yet decided how the accreditation results would be utilized. This leaves much to be desired and thereby the need for an international accrediting body, IAO, if it takes care of the above mentioned lacunae 
can fill the desired gap. Expectations from accrediting authority. In a recent report, the Institution of Engineers Australia has outlined the generic attributes of an engineering graduate from an accredited course. They are ability to apply knowledge of basic sciences and engineering fundamentals, ability to communicate effectively not only with engineers but also with the society at large, in-depth technical competence in at least one engineering discipline, ability to undertake problem identification, formulation and solution, ability to utilize a systems approach, design and operational performance, ability to function effectively as an individual and in multidisciplinary and multi multicultural teams with the capacity to be a leader or manager as well as an effective team member. Understanding of and commitment to professional and ethical responsibilities. Understanding of social, cultural, global, environmental and business responsibilities. Capacity to undertake lifelong learning. Besides the above standards expected from international accreditation, some future directions impacting accreditation are engineering practice today has changed dramatically and irreversibly due to growing global competition and subsequent restructuring of industry development in IT, shift from defense work to private enterprise as the major source of employment. Therefore, accrediting authority should ensure that engineering graduates should have number one, ability to communicate, number two, ability to work in teams, number three, think creatively, and last but not the least, learn quickly and value diversity. In all, we need a new instruction paradigm with new standards and new ways of assessing those standards. International institutional assessment by itself does little to convince the public of an institution's ability to provide quality education. Only external accountability or accreditation can inform the general public and peers. Positive effects of international accreditation. There are several positive consequences of accreditation for the institution, for the faculty, students and staff, for the parents of the students, for the university administrators and the general public. The accreditation criteria define the nature and scope of prerequisites for institutions imparting technical education and the profile of a good institution. For instance, since the criteria demand that every institution should have a mission and goals, industry institute interaction and research and development, we have seen institutions try to satisfy these requirements. Accreditation also promotes awareness and replication of good practices as in the case of energy conservation and environmental protection. An accrediting body of international stature can set high benchmarks for institutions worldwide. Since accreditation is mainly undertaken for improving quality, it will have a positive impact. Awareness of required international standards will induce the following changes. Improvement in input. One, curriculum which will be of global standards and matching those of industry. Faculty improvement, training for new skills will bring fresh knowledge for the benefit of the faculty. 
student faculty exchange, internationally accredited institutions can collaborate with each other on peer-to-peer -peer basis. Exposure of administration to international industry practices. Labs and infrastructure will have to be absolutely updated. New financial resources might also be attractive. An improvement in output, better student employability, as students will look forward to international jobs and they will know what to expect. Better research facility for faculty, accredited institutions can collaborate with each other a common platform would certainly cut the cost of research drastically. Industry education proximity will increase. Every student, faculty, administrator will become aware of industry needs. Attraction of students for exchange programs. More and more students will cross international boundaries to gain valuable foreign exposure. Boost in the improvement of employability skills and an increase in the memorandum of understandings, patents, national international conferences, research papers, manpower, short term courses, professional society activities, brand equity, reputation, scholarship, credibility, national image, pride, excellence, quality, role modeling and what not. Above all, a common platform for institutions worldwide. The opportunities are limitless, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good day, everybody. My name is Dr. Hadi al -Raka. I'm from Saudi Arabia. It's my pleasure to contribute today talking about some point in regards of international accreditation for academic institutions. Uh, we are going to cover uh, four points today about the international accreditation. The first one will be the cooperation between the international accreditation and the institution who wish to enhance their uh, academic uh, standard. And the second point will be covering the student self-study process. And the third one will be the confident student in the quality assurance of the academic programs. And the last point we are going to cover will be the quality assurance about the faculty selection. Uh, as we are talking about the role of international accreditation uh, in ensuring the high academic standard, uh, when institution uh, get accreditation, by the International uh, Association, it's, the, it's just the start of the journey. It doesn't mean it will end there. Rather than uh, international accreditation uh, agencies works on, uh, on, the, on the institution to enhance its uh, academic standard, there are several ways that the accreditation uh, adopts and improve the standards of their institutions. Uh, they, it, may, it may hold the workshop, online uh, webinars, uh, training, uh, training sessions, seminars, and developing on continuous improvement strategies. The international accreditation uh, maintains and uh, implements a quality framework, which ensures that institutions operates with the international accreditation administrative and managerial operational standard. When it comes to the self-study process, the self-process uh, or the self-study process is most important part of the whole accreditation cycle, both in terms of time and effort and the value of uh, delivered self-study. To continuous improvement on process which is identify and celebrate the institutional strength points. This process also involves uh, the definite 
on the area of improvement and international and addresses it, this institutional. It could be it could be a considerable improvement and alignment for the accreditation uh, standard according to the uh, self study stages. Uh, the confident or the confidence of the students, confident of students uh, and other stakeholders highly at education and in in some likely to establish and maintain through uh, official quality assurance uh, initiatives, which ensure programs are well designed and regular uh, monitors and periodically reviewed, therefore securing their uh, continuous relevance accuracy. The quality assurance standards include some points. The first one is the development and uh, publication of explicit uh, intended learning outcomes. The second is the careful uh, attention, curriculum and programs design and content. And the third one is the specific need of the different uh, modes delivering like full-time, part-time, distance learning, e-learning, and the type of higher education, academic, vocational, professional, all of these type of academic programs. Availability of appropriate learning procedures. Uh, and the body of the teaching program monitoring of the progress and achievement students, uh, regular uh, periodic review of the program, including external panel members, regular feedback from the employee, labor market, and representative of the other relevant organizations, uh, and public institutions, which is student quality assurance about their level. And the last point we are going to talk about today about international accreditation and the role of accreditation is about the quality of assurance of the faculty himself or herself. Teachers are the single most important learning resources available to most students. It is important that those who teach have a full knowledge and understanding of the subject they are teaching have the necessary skill of experience, transmit their knowledge and understanding effectively to the students and range of teaching context and across the feedback of the own performance. Accredited institutions ensure that the staff recruiting, recruitment, appointment procedures include means of making certain that all new staff have the at least the minimum necessary level of competence. Teaching staff are given opportunity to develop the, uh, themselves uh, and to extend their uh, teaching capacity and should be encouraged to value their skills. Institutions should be provide poor teaching with opportunity to improve their skills to acceptable level. Acceptable level should have the uh, means to uh, remove them from the teaching duties uh, if they are not continue to improve the administrative the, the initiative. This is simply because if, if they continue teaching while they are uh, not actively participate in the level of improvement of their level, uh, that means they will negatively affect the students' level and the academic programs and the institution reputation at the same time, I wish you the best and wish you to see you accredited as institutions to have the confident and the comp high competition in the market as the reputation of the in academic programs or an academic institution is high value uh, in any institution or uh, body of, of agencies or governmental. This is very important accreditation. Good luck for all of us. Thank you.
Greetings. Welcome to IAO Lebanon chapter. My name is Grand Doctor Professor Servalant Zare Seropian. We are going to discuss about the standards of international accreditation. The intention of accreditation is to promote excellence in educational preparation while assuring the public that graduates of the accredited institute have advanced set of knowledge and skill. Quality education can be achieved through a variety of ways, and it is the duty of every accreditation body to thoroughly study every factor that can make the institute worthwhile of accreditation. Every accreditation body has its own set of accreditation standards they consider while granting an institute with international accreditation. Some of these factors are 1. Mission, goals, and objectives. The institution's mission statement must clearly and appropriately define its principal purposes and priorities and be influential in guiding, planning, and action within the institution. 2. Governance and administration. The governing body must provide effective leadership in the interests of the institution as a whole and its clients through policy development and processes for accountability. Senior administrators must lead the activities of the institution effectively within a clearly defined governance structure. Three, management of quality assurance and improvement. Quality assurance processes must involve all sections of the institution and be effectively integrated into normal planning and administrative processes. Criteria for assessment of quality must include inputs, processes and outcomes with a particular focus on outcomes. Quality must be assured by reference to evidence based on indicators of performance and challenging external benchmarks. Standard four, learning and teaching. The institution must have an effective system for ensuring that all programs meet high standards of learning and teaching through initial approvals, monitoring of performance and provision of institution-wide support services. In all programs, student learning outcomes must be clearly specified. Standards of learning must be assessed and verified through appropriate processes and benchmarked against demanding all relevant external reference points. Teaching staff must be appropriately qualified and experienced for their particular teaching responsibilities. Use teaching strategies suitable for different kinds of learning outcomes and participate in activities to improve their teaching effectiveness. Teaching quality and effectiveness of programs must be evaluated through student assessments and graduate and employer surveys with evidence from these sources used as a basis for plans for improvement. Standard 5. Student Administration and Support Services Administration of admissions and student record Systems must be reliable and responsive with confidentiality of records maintained in keeping with stated policies. Students' rights and responsibilities must be clearly defined and understood, with transparent and fair procedures available for discipline and appeals. Mechanisms for academic advice, counseling, and support services must be accessible and responsive to student needs. Support services for students must go beyond formal academic requirements and include extracurricular provisions for religious, cultural, sporting, and other activities relevant to the needs of the student body. Standard number six, learning resources. Learning resources including libraries and provisions for access to electronic and other reference material must be planned to meet the particular requirements of the institution's programs and provided at an adequate level. Library and associated IT facilities must be accessible at the times required to support independent learning with assistance provided in finding material required. Facilities must be provided for individual and group study in an environment conductive to effective investigations 
and research. The services must be evaluated and improved in response to systematic feedback from teaching staff and the students. Standard number seven, policy and planning. The institution must develop and effectively implement master plans for development and management of facilities and equipment to meet the needs of the institution. This planning must be carried out in consultation with stakeholders and be responsive to their requirements. Standard eight, financial planning and management. Financial resources must be adequate for the programs and services offered and effectively managed in keeping with program requirements and institutional priorities. Budgetary processes should allow for long-term planning over at least a three-year period. Effective systems must be used for budgeting and for financial delegations and accountability, providing flexibility for managers at different levels in the institution combined with institutional oversight and effective risk management. Standard number nine, employment processes. Teaching and other staff must have the qualifications and experience required for effective exercise of responsibilities. Professional development strategies must be followed to ensure continuing improvement in the expertise of teaching and other staff. Performance of all teaching and other staff must be periodically evaluated with outstanding performance recognized and support provided for improvement where required. Effective, fair, and transparent processes must be available for the resolution of conflicts and disputes involving teaching or other staff. Standard number 10, research. All staff teaching higher education programs must be involved in sufficient, appropriate, scholarly activities to ensure they remain up to date with developments in their field. And those developments should be reflected in their teaching. Standard number 11, institutional relationships with the community. Contributing to the community must be recognized as an important institutional responsibility. Facilities and services must be made available to assist with community developments. Teaching and other staff must be encouraged to be involved in the community and information about the institution and its activities made known. Community perceptions of the institution must be monitored and appropriate strategies adopted to improve understanding and enhance its reputation. All of these points are considered while granting an institute with international accreditation. Only institutes ensuring presence of the above listed factors become an internationally accredited institute and assure the students that they are studying at the right institute. Thank you and welcome to IAO Chapter Lebanon. The role of international accreditation in ensuring high academic standards. When an institute gets accredited by an international accreditation organization, its journey doesn't end there. Rather, the international accreditation agency works with the institute to enhance its education standards. There are several ways that an accreditation adopts to improve the standards of the institute. It may hold workshops, uh, online webinars, training sessions, seminars, and develop continuous improvement strategies. The international accreditation maintains and implements a quality framework, which assures that the institutions operate in line with international academic, administrative, managerial, and operational standards. The self-study process 
is the most important part of the whole accreditation cycle, both in terms of time and effort and in the value to be derived. Self-study is a continuous improvement process which identifies and celebrates the institution's strong points. This process also involves the identification of areas of improvement and initiates actions to address them. Institutions invariably find that considerable improvement alignment with accreditation standards occur during this vital self-study stage. What about the uh, confidence of students then? The confidence of students and other stakeholders in higher education is more likely to be established and maintained through effective quality assurance activities, which ensure that uh, programs are well designed, uh, regularly monitored, and periodically reviewed, thereby securing their continuing relevance and currency. The quality assurance standards include few points, which I'm going to list. Uh, one of them is the development and publication of explicit uh, intended learning outcomes. Uh, another could be careful attention to curriculum and program design and content. A uh, third point would be a specific needs of different modes of delivery. Uh, example, uh, for example, a full-timer, a part-time, uh, distance learning, uh, e-learning, and types of higher education, whether it's academic, vocational, or professional. Um, also, the availability of appropriate learning resources. Also, it uh, emphasizes also formal program approval procedures by a body other than the teaching, uh, that, uh, other than that who are teaching the program. Monitoring of the program and achievement of students is also very important. Uh, another point could be regular periodic reviews of program, including external uh, panel members. Uh, regular feedbacks from employers, labor market representatives, and other living organizations. And uh, finally, I would say also the participation of students in equally, uh, in quality, I mean, in quality assurance activities. What about the teachers uh, or the staff or the faculty? Actually, the teachers, as we all know, are the single most important learning resource available to most students. It's uh, important that those who teach have a full knowledge and understanding of the subject they are teaching. Uh, they, have, they should have the necessary skills and experience to transmit, it, uh, to transmit their knowledge and understanding effectively to students in a range of uh, teaching contexts. And they can access also feedbacks on their own performance. The accredited institutions ensure that their staff recruitment and appointment procedures include a mean of making certain that all new staff, at least uh, the minimum necessary level, um, I mean all the, all the new staff have at least the minimum necessary level of competence. Teaching staff are given the opportunities to develop and extend their teaching capacity and should be encouraged to value their skills. Institutions should provide the poor teachers with opportunities to improve their skills to an acceptable level and should have the means to remove them from their teaching duties if they continue to be demonstrably ineffective. Thank you.